So you have, you have to know what to do. When, you have to be able to recognize a problem, and you have to know what to do and be able to do it on your own. Okay, or you shouldn't be doing the procedure. Because implant surgery is surgery. Okay, it's an invasive procedure. You're cutting on a human being. Okay, and you can cause a lot of damage. And in surgical residency, that's something that is beat into us from day one. Okay, that you are doing something that can really hurt someone. I mean, you know, in medical school, you learn. Uh, the, uh, First do no, I can't remember the Latin, but first do no harm, okay? And you've got to make sure that what you are doing does not cause harm because surgery, no matter how simple it seems, it's not, the implant surgery is not just drilling a hole and putting, putting a screw in, you can really hurt someone. In general surgery residency, I remember one of the attendings telling us, you know, I can teach a monkey to do surgery, okay? But I can't teach the monkey to know when not to do surgery. Okay, and if they do the surgery, I can't teach the monkey what to do if something happens. That's what sets us apart. <laughs> Since I have a cone beam based surgical guide, does that mean that I can place the implant without a flap? In other words, can I do a tissue punch? And when I hear that question, the first thing that comes to my mind is you don't understand. Okay, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be doing implants yet because it's not having a surgical guide that determines whether or not you need a, you can do a tissue punch. What determines it is if you have enough bone, okay? So if you have to augment the bone, you obviously need to lay a flap. And the other is attached tissue. If you don't have that two millimeters of keratinized tissue all the way around the implant, then you should lay a flap and not do a tissue punch, okay? Because you want to preserve that keratinized tissue. So if the contact points are closer to the bone crest, then maintenance of the papilla will be more predictable, but the tooth form tends to look more square. So the best balance is right in here, this five to six millimeter distance between the crest of the bone and the interdental contacts. So uh, the maximum distance between the crestal bone and the contact point should be about six millimeters as a maximum in order to assure, uh, maintain the interdental papilla filling the embrasure. Okay, and this is a great case of mine where I did, um, patient had a bridge from seven to 10 that was failing. Um, I took out both teeth, uh, did a ridge split to widen the ridge, placed four implants and bone grafted, and this is his final restoration. We were able, because we followed that rule of six millimeters from the crest of the bone, to, um, to, the prox to the interproximal contacts on the, on the restorations that even though you know, the bone does, didn't have that scalloping, uh, we still have nice fill of interdental papillas between the implants.